Oh, come on. Why don't we stand to our feet right now and magnify him for the church is alive and well. Oh, family and friends, we're not looking at something that's dead and dried and washed up, but the church is alive and well, and I'm so thankful to be in God's church. I'm so thankful to be in God's church. I'm so thankful to be in God's church. Praise God. Somebody say the church is alive. Somebody say the church is well. <laughs> amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is good. Amen. You may be seated for just a few moments today. I'm here to introduce to you. I have the esteemed honor for the grand introduction, the responsibility to present to you, our family and our friends, the greatest institution this side of eternity. You see, its alumni have transcended all mortality, and they rest in their eternal mansion. This institution serves as an industry leader in global economics with returns that come in good measure and compressed down and they're still running over Oh, I don't know if you get that visual or not but the more I began to think about it you know when I compress my wallet it doesn't seem to overflow but the Lord says that he will give it good measure and press down and running over. That means you step on it, you push it down, you compress it and it's still running over Oh, it serves as a premier surgical procedure center, converting stones into flesh and extracting the most aggressive bodily invaders without even one cut of a knife. Allow me the honor to introduce you to the church. The church magnificent. The church triumphant. The church that's mighty in power. The church that is unmatched in experience. The church that does not obtain its strength by numbers or possessions. The church that knows nothing about stained glass windows. The church that never knew hymnals. The church who tarried on prayer, in prayer, on floors that had no carpet. The church who worshipped without long pews or padded chairs. The church that is more than a vibrant force or a fancy trend. The church that is like a tidal wave reshaping everything in its path. Let me introduce you to the church that is a consuming fire marking everything by its presence. Oh, family, friends. Allow me to introduce you to the church. You see, this is more than an entertainment venue. This is more than a please me or I'm out of here atmosphere. The church that serves with the purpose of change over comfort. Let me introduce you to the church. Let me introduce you to the church. You see, the church that transcends time, the church that outlives fads, the church of the scriptures, the church that continues to operate in its original power. You see, religious movements, they have come and they have gone. They flourish for a season. They peak at some level of maturity and then they begin to decline to potential non-existence. Yet... There remains one notable exception to the trend. There remains one notable exception to the trend. It is in the Genesis of the New Testament the reader has the ability to invoke the law of first mention. When capturing the Lord's introduction of this new establishment, 
You see, Jesus is questioning his devout, his closest followers regarding his identity. And after the conversation lingers for a moment, Jesus begins to push the issue a little bit farther. And he begins to make it a personal question. And he asks, who do you say that I am? Not who do they say that I am, but who do you say that I am? And the bold, open mouth, insert foot fisherman, also known as Peter, confidently declares that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, Simon, you are correct. And I tell you, the flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, has shown you. And Peter, let me tell you one more thing. Matthew 16 and 18 says that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Oh, I said upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You see, church family and friends, the church is alive and it's well. I said the church is alive and it's well. Oh, Brother Jones, I'm thankful to be in this glorious church. I didn't join it. (laughs) Brother Rick, I didn't have some public confession and say, hey, I'm a part of your family now. No, but I was regenerated. (laughs) I was born again of water and of spirit, and I'm in this glorious church. Oh, you see, this church has a foundation that's unwavering, built upon the chief cornerstone himself, Jesus Christ. It had the intentions of being battered by the world. It was developed to be accused by the enemy. It was even intended to be tempted by the flesh, persecuted by its own, and neither time nor circumstance could detour it from its divine blueprint. The church would be built by the great architect himself. You see, human institutions, though they're gifted, Gifted, though they're talented, though they may be resourceful, they are matchless to the church. They are matchless to the church. There's not a single one that can boast of the transforming power that the church can celebrate. Oh, this is the church. This is the church. You see, it's not just a church. It's not just any church. It is the church. And this is some weak attempt to proclaim superiority. This is to simply identify that He is the way, the truth, and the life. That no man comes to God but by Him. Oh, you see, it's this is the church. This is the ecclesia. You and I belonging to a cold out body of people. Let me just pause for a moment and say that if you have yet to be born again of water and of spirit, then you're not you are not left out of the church. You are not on your own. You are not some island to yourself. But I believe that God is tugging at hearts. God is speaking to hearts even at this moment. And if you feel any tug in your spirit and you've yet to be baptized in Jesus' name or filled with the Spirit of God, then I promise you, this is the church. This is the church. It's the ecclesia, the called out body of people. You see, at his ascension, he didn't predict a church divided by nationality. He did not set in motion a church that was segregated by color or opinion or ethnicity. It's not what he did. In fact, he likened the church to the coming kingdom of heaven. And the book of Revelation boasts of that church demographic comprised of every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation. You see, it's here that we turn our attention to the genesis of the New Testament church. And we find the church's most complete and perfect example. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5. You see people's opinions and views. They have changed of what the church is or what it could be or what it should be. But by divine pattern the church remains the same Acts chapter 2 they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and verse 5 look at what this says they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of out of every nation out of every nation out of every nation 
under heaven. This is the church. You see, Christ came to earth with the purpose of establishing the church. You see, he identified himself with the church. He openly declared his selfless love for the church. And he is returning to gather his church unto himself. Paul considered his persecution of the church his greatest crime. He considered his persecution of the church his greatest crime. God help me. Never to persecute the church by taking for granted the privilege that I have, the honor that God has given us. Oh, Paul recognized this is the church. (laughs) You see, the church is established on the day of Pentecost with a new and a better covenant. A covenant established through the blood of its mediator, Jesus Christ. The covenant that has no stone tablets of commandments, but rather the laws of God are now written on fleshly tables of believers' hearts. And now you and I becoming the salt and light of the earth. The church is described through scripture in various metaphors. We are identified as the bride of Christ. Jesus himself promised to be our soon-to-be husband, preparing herself for that wedding ceremony. The church is described as the body of Christ. Jesus himself, the head of that body, the source of life and direction. The church represents the children of God, the temple of God. You see, the church was founded supernaturally, and it exists supernaturally. (laughs) It was founded supernaturally, and it continues to exist supernaturally. (laughs) But Cheryl, I am nothing. I am nothing without Him. In Him I live and I move and I have my being. You see, I don't contribute that much here. But the presence of God, the Spirit of God established that this is a supernatural church. And it operates and it exists supernaturally. You see, you and I, Christians... Oh, I, I, I hope <laughs> we, we make up this chosen race, a peculiar people called out to proclaim His glory. You know, I just wonder, I, I believe it's probably apparent that Calvary perplexed Satan. Calvary probably seemingly perplexed the enemy of our soul. Because the Bible says that if they'd known it was the Lord of glory, they would not have crucified him. So I just get this visual of, of Satan kind of, you know, thinking, wow, I got him. I got him. And y'all know the song even celebrates. And on the third day, it just makes me wonder what he did on the day of Pentecost. When the church was established and the fulfillment of Christ's ministry was put into motion. And in a short two years, the world was turned upside down because of the church. (laughs) Because of the church. Oh, (laughs) you see this, the church is a fervent church. It's like a blazing torch lighting up the dark corners and the shadowy recesses of men's hearts. Peter said the church has been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Paul said the church has been set for a light with the purpose of delivering the message of salvation. I hope you're hearing the church. This is the church. Oh, I know we have a beautiful edifice here. I know that God has been good to us and we have a beautiful building with beautiful people. But I'm telling you, the purpose of the church is not this. The church ha, is about reaching. The church the whole time is about pursuing, about chasing, about going after. That's the church. And the church is alive and well. Oh, can we thank the Lord 
right now. Would you mind just clapping your hands towards heaven? You see, as we said in the back today, we turn our attention to the first century church to figure out how they did it and what they did. And, you know, we understand very quickly that they were unencumbered by modern conveniences. They understood the value of sharing personal testimonies with life-convicting and life-giving authority. Never despise your story. Never dis- I would share it everywhere you can. Anybody that will give you an ear, you ought to tell them about how good God has been, about how God has given you favor, about how God has blessed you, because that is the church. They recognized the significance of their salvation experiences. They even described it as this, I've been born again. I have been re- Generated. I have experienced a new birth. Oh, that's how the first century church described it. Brother Hearn, I pray that I never forget that I have been born again. Oh, I have been born again. This isn't something I've merited on my own, something that I brought about on my own, something that I have earned on my own. But God saw fit. God gave favor. God has loved. Oh, and I have been born again. Oh, I'm talking about the church. You see, the church that is promised a soon coming departure. The church that is promised power and provision. The church that has a divine destiny with deity. Oh. I pray you're being encouraged a little bit right now. I pray you're just reminding yourself, and I pray the Word of God is helping you just a little bit today to take comfort in knowing that God has you in the palm of His hand, and there's not anything to worry about because you have the promise of power and you have the promise of provision. It doesn't matter where you go or what happens. Oh, the church. You see, I'm not talking about the church in light of your doctrinal preferences. Your opinion versus my opinion or somebody else's opinion. That's not the church I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, uh, that's not what I'm I'm after this afternoon, not my agenda. I'm, I'm not here to debate what you think is theologically appropriate or not. All I know is that the Lord set in motion at the departure of His life here on earth. He put in motion not a church, not a gospel. He put in motion the church. The church. Oh, there is but one gospel, one good news message, and it's not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of scripture. Oh, this is the church. I'm not really even talking about a church, the church, in light of your worship preference. No, I'm talking about the church in light of personal preference. You see, God, convict me if I ever have to have the atmosphere set just right to yield my worship. God, convict me if everything's got to be just right in my world for me to yield some praise to you. God, convict me if my spirit is only stirred when things are just right in my world and in my life. No, I pray that it's a recognition of His deity. I pray that it's an understanding of who He is. A recognition that He is the Almighty. Oh, church family, I wish we could just celebrate Him right now for a moment. I wish we could magnify Him for a moment right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, 
I dare go this route, but I feel like I better. I know that in the midst of all what's going on in the quarantine, if I couldn't worship in my home, then what makes me think I can worship right here? You see, it doesn't matter where I'm at or what's going on in my world. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves to be celebrated. He is the I am, the chief shepherd. Oh, Jesus. In the secular market, we have, we have stated that all that's going on in our world will determine the who is and the who is not. The who is and the who is not. I pray during this time, Brother Hearn, that this determines the who is. The who is. I don't want to get comfortable in my lazy boy. I don't want to get comfortable in the lack of activity of what's going on. No, if we don't have an activity here at the church taking place, I want to find a place of prayer. I want to find a place to get a hold of heaven. I want to touch the throne of God because who knows who's depending on that. This is the church. This is the church. Not encumbered with modern conveniences, sensitive and obedient to the Holy Ghost, ministering to lives on the streets who are in need, touching hearts and lives. Oh, Jesus, this is the church. This is the church. This is the church. Oh, Could you help me pray right now? Jesus, oh God, speak to your people. Oh God, speak to hearts right now. Oh, at home, abroad, wherever, God. Oh, I tell you. Come on, church. I hope you're feeling the tug of the Holy Ghost. You see, I was joking about it somewhat in the back a moment ago, but that donut shop trip in the morning serves more than the purpose of my breakfast. That time I sit at the restaurant and I interact and engage with that hostess, it serves more than just filling my belly wherever I go. <laughs> this is the church operating in power, operating in authority, set in motion by the Lord of hosts. Oh. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Friday, I called to get my pilot schedule service done, setting up an appointment, and I talked to a lady by the name of Laura, and Laura was a lot of fun on the phone. She was fun to talk to on the phone. We were teasing about some, I don't even know what, and I asked her, I said, Laura, I said, tell me. I said, do you go to church faithfully anywhere? She goes, oh, no, honey. She said, I was raised Catholic, and God hadn't healed me yet. Uh, it's not my words. Those are hers. I'm just saying it. I said, Laura, I said, you would be a blast to have in church. You'd be so much fun to worship together with. I'm telling you, this is the church. Everywhere we go, walking in God's power, walking in His anointing. This is the church. Oh, Jesus. This is the church. So if you shout, shout. If you dance, dance. If you run, run. If you cry, cry. Regardless of how you express your worship, be it sincere, be it heartfelt, gratitude and adoration, just express it. Oh, just 
show it. And don't judge somebody else who shows it different than you do. You see, the church isn't meant to please you. It's meant to save you. The church isn't meant to, Brother Bethel, be that ice cream delivery man. The church is meant to save you. It's too important. There's too much at stake to get caught up in personal preferences because this is the church that he purchased with his blood. Oh, my. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. This is the church. Mm. Oh, Jesus. This is the church. Family and friends, would you just stretch your hands towards heaven? This church, the church, it operates in a power that is not its own, but it belongs to the head, Jesus Christ, to whom all power and heaven and earth resides. You see, the church is not subject to decay like human institutions. No, you're not a part of something dead, dried up, dusty, something that's been put on the shelf, something that's seen its better days. No, you belong to the church. This is the church. Oh, God. It is the only thing that's predestined. When others fail, the church will still be here. When others fall short, the church will still be here. When our humanity is insufficient, the church will still be here. This is the church. You see, it's not bankrupt. It will not go bankrupt. It will not shut its doors and it will not be silenced. Oh, oh I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you if you want to find a place to pray, if that's up front here, you're welcome to. If that's in your seat, if that's at home on your couch, I, I don't know, but I encourage you wherever you are right now to find a place to touch heaven and just be reminded that this is the church. It's not dead. It's not dried up. It's not washed away. It is alive and well. It has the promises of God upon it. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I stay in the church and if I've yet to find myself a part of the church I'm not going to let anything hold me back I'm not going to let opinion I'm not going to let worry I'm not going to let fear keep me from being a part of the church hallelujah oh Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord
Come on, church, I feel a stirring of the Spirit. Would you just be sensitive and obedient to the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let God stir your heart right now. Oh, whether you're here or somewhere else, let the Spirit of God stir your heart right now. Oh, you belong to the church. You belong to the church. You belong to the church. Doesn't matter what's come your way. Don't, doesn't matter. You belong to the church. Oh, ha. Born again experience water baptism in the precious name of Jesus, the infilling of the Holy Ghost being regenerated to newness of life is a promise that is to all.
Come on, church. Why don't we just linger for a moment? I, if you've got other things you need to do, that's fine. Take care. Oh, but I wonder if we could just tarry for a moment. Uh, let heaven speak. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. church, I feel a witness of the Holy Ghost. Can we lift our voices collectively? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. than it's ever been. <laughs> but Jones, its days are brighter than they've ever been. Sister Cheryl, I believe he's coming back for a church that's ready. Sister Johnson, it'll all be worth it. <laughs> oh, this is the church. Can we all stand today? Amen. Such a beautiful spirit of the Lord today. I'm so thankful. Thank you all for being here. I look forward to hearing what God does in your lives this week. And I would encourage you to be sensitive and obedient. Because who knows what path you may cross, whose life you might intersect. Sister Marilyn, that prayer saved a life. Only God knows. Only God knows. And I'll justify my donuts shop stop with a purpose. Amen. But the wind girl quit losing the weight because I'm picking it up. It may have something to do with the donut shop. I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Church family, we love all of you so much. It's so good to be a part of the family of God. And I hope you recognize today maybe a little bit more of what that really means. And I pray that if you have yet to really experience that, or maybe you've not found yourself a part of a church family yet, that's not our claim to be superior, not some attempt to segregate ourselves. We want you to know that there's a promise that's for you and everybody. Amen. Amen. My, just the Lord's been so good to us today. Amen. Don't forget, if you are interested in some next steps, please check us out online. Go hit that up. Make sure that you can be a part of that if we can help you anyway. 
I also want to uh, let you know that the team has put together something for you. I pray that I know, let me say it this way, I know that you enjoy worshiping when you're not here. Um, and so let me encourage you that they have a worship set. You can go find them on Spotify. The playlist is Take Sundays With You. It's a really cool thing. You get to experience Sunday throughout your week. And so go find them on Spotify, First Pentecostal. Or is it Consul First Pentecostal? I don't know. It's one of those. Just look up the playlist on Spotify. You'll find it. Take Sundays with you, and uh, you'll, you'll enjoy that. And uh, we will be working pretty diligently over the course of the next few weeks to get some things kind of back in alignment as we're allowed to gather again with more on-site type of things. So I really want to do a church family picnic or something. Uh, I don't know when we'll be able to, uh, but I want to do that sometime soon, Lord willing. Uh, so hopefully we can put something together and uh, you'll get to be a part of that. I don't know if we'll get to do it at the park or not. I don't know if they'll be open yet, but nonetheless, we're going to do something very soon. I want to be a part. And I want you to be a part as we celebrate our family together. But I just, I, I'm so thankful. I just can't express it enough. I, I guess I'll quit saying it, but I'm just so thankful today. Amen. Brother Hovey, I love you, my friend. And uh, Sister Johnson, before we, I'll tell Brother Terry, Sister Karen, we miss them. We love them. If you see somebody, look around. If you see somebody you know that's not here, not able to be here today, don't call them and guilt them. Don't make them feel guilty for not being here. Encourage them. Let them know that you love them and you miss them and you're praying with them. And if they need anything, let us know. We'll be glad to help however we can. Amen. Brother Hobie, would you mind dismissing us in prayer today? Amen. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Smile at one another and be friendly. However, just don't shake hands. Don't kick one another. Don't slap each other. <laughs> be friendly. Have a great start to your week. Care team, we'll meet you in Hearn Hall here in about 15 minutes. We won't be long. Promise to have you out of here very quickly. Just a couple of things. So God bless all of you. Have a great start to your week. We'll see you all Wednesday night at 7 o'clock.